Hi, my name is Sean Peniston. Uh, I'm a senior leader in the field of leadership, learning and talent. Been in that field for about 26 years now. Uh, and I've done that work across a number of different industries for organizations like BT, GSK, Xerox and Astellas Pharma. So I've worked in a number of organizations that have done some work in this space. Uh, and as an example, uh, within BT, BT have a program called Tech Women. And the uh, desire behind that program is to really encourage women to consider a career in leadership and to encourage them uh, in that direction and also to provide them with some of the key skills and capabilities that they might require on their, their journey into leadership. Um, the program is, is really widely acknowledged in BT at doing exactly that, at, at giving confidence uh, and helping uh, build greater aspiration amongst its women managers to make that, that step into leadership. Um, the program aims to give uh, a, a sort of fairly generic um, kind of uh, leadership development program, but there are extra modules sort of bolted on the back end of it, which are all around helping uh, women to understand some of the challenges that they might face uh, in terms of progressing their careers in BT and some of the uh, stumbling blocks they might come up, up against and how to prepare for those things and how to uh, address them and overcome them when they come to them. It also uh, helps create uh, a network of advocates as well. So participants in the program have uh, the opportunity to meet with senior leaders, senior executives from across BT, so that when they're thinking about their careers and their career plans and, and where they might go next, they've got that informal network that they can reach out to and connect with, and just gives them that, that sort of little helping hand um, to make some of those kind of key uh, decisions and, and, and kind of uh, refine their career aspirations. So it's interesting, um, and, and I think in many respects, the skills that women need as, as they move into leadership roles have the same skills that, that men uh, require when they move into those roles. Uh, I think the key difference is that we are looking at a situation where we've got centuries of experience and, and kind of bias towards men moving into leadership positions. And, lots of the uh, thinking up until as recently as the sort of 80s and 90s were that leadership was all about being powerful and authoritative and dominating and being that strong role model um, and I think more and more now leadership is becoming more of a fine art and, and the ability to collaborate and to bring people together and to take lots of different views and opinions and synthesize those and come up with well-informed decisions I, I think those are some of the leadership attributes that organizations are you know, requiring and, and looking to, to develop more and more these days. But a lot of the skills, as I say, are, you know, are um, the same for, for both genders. You know, you know, it's about um, the ability to be innovative. It's the ability to, to set a strategic direction that makes sense for the organization, its customers, its stakeholders and to take people on that journey, both inside and outside of the company. So whilst most of the core skills, I would say, you know, um, are the same regardless of gender, I do think, you know, typically men and women would, would come with uh, different skills. And I think those skills that women have tended to bring to, to leadership are becoming more and more respected and more and more valued. And I think people generally realise that, that kind of having diverse thoughts around a table will lead to better decisions and I, and I think that's good news all around. So when I was at GSK we had a female CEO Emma Wormsley who'd taken over from Andrew Whitty and she was a complete contrast to Andrew in, in many respects. Andrew was very much this sort of charismatic leader that people bought into and, and sort of followed uh, and he was the, 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 the leader on high. Whereas with Emma, um, when Emma appeared in public uh, within, sorry, within GSK and, and kind of um, had communication sessions, she was always at pains to, to uh, bring all the people into the limelight to show that the exco, the senior team, worked as a team and that she really valued and respected all of the different opinions that were available to her. Um, 
that's not to say that she was shy of being the leader. She was a very strong leader, but she brought with her this approach that said, leadership is all about bringing great ideas and great thinking together, weighing up all of those different inputs. And then as the leader making uh, what I feel is, is, the, is the most um, appropriate choice for, for GSK. Um, and I think that um, that really was something that employees loved. As much as, as Andrew was, was incredibly popular, people loved to see the fact that, that teamwork was at the heart of what was happening in, in GSK. Um, and that people that brought different opinions were, were very much respected and given airtime. Although Emma, as I say, was you know, very um, willing and able to, to kind of make the call on, on tough calls. And I think this is something that, that more broadly people are, are sensing now that, that you know, diverse groups and diverse opinions lead to better decision making rather than having one person that, that has to know all of the answers to every problem, which just you know, really seems like crazy in this, this kind of complicated business world that we, we operate in today.